What's up, YouTube, and welcome back to the Knicks Cave. I know I'm a little late with this. Everybody know that the New York Knicks have declined Derrick Rose's option. Uh, I'll read a report, and then I'll give you my um, my opinion and what how I felt about the Derrick Rose signing in the beginning. All right. Derrick Rose's time with the New York Knicks has come to an end. The Knicks are not picking up Rose's $15.6 million team option for next season. According to multiple reports, this makes the veteran guard an unrestricted free agent sign with any team over the offseason. Technically, he could even resign with the New York Knicks, and I think that would be another bad idea. And like I said, after I read this report, I will get into my faux pine. Uh, Rose spent the past three seasons in New York with the Knicks, but he played sparingly. As of late, he appeared in just 27 games during the 2022-2023 season, played only 12.5 minutes, and those appearances Despite the limited run, the former NBA MVP recently stated that he still feels like he is improving as a player, even as a late at this late stage in his career. I'm still in the mix, Rose told Mark Jake Mark Jake Spears of the An Anascape. It's like someone is asking you to reflect on yours if you're still in the game. That's how I feel. I still feel like I'm giving them my all. I still feel like I'm getting better. It may sound crazy because it's due. And he said, but it's true. Um, I still feel like I'm getting better. And I, I'm sorry, I have to disagree with Derrick Rose on that. Um, at this point in time, still reading the article, it's tough to tell just how much Rose 34 have left in the tank. It's not that tough. But he will still likely draw some interest on the open market as a veteran guard with ample experience. Contending teams could look to, to him as a way to bolster the bench, while younger teams might be interested in his mentorship. It will be interesting to see where he ends up. All right, let's get into this right here, right real quick. I'm going to be frank, and I'm going to be honest. We should have never gave him that um that extension. We should have never had gave Derrick Rose that extension. He was not worth that extension, even a year that he, the best year, and let's be honest, the New York Knicks, it was a terrible year. You know what I'm saying? It was a terrible year. Derrick Rose was one of our best players. We did not have Jalen Brunson. So, yeah, a lot of people was happy to have him back. I was upset. I thought it was a waste of money and a waste of roster move. Not only was it a waste, it kept key young players off the basketball court. And then again, it didn't because if you look to see what Derrick Rose actually did this year, how I many games he played in, and what he actually did, I, I would have preferred to see McBride out on that court. I'm just going to be honest with you. Um, even in the year that he was a candidate for six man of the year, he only played 35 games. Started three games that year. Yes, he did average 26 minutes. But each year, the minutes dropped. And that's my point. We should we should, we should have anticipated that. As an organization, and I will talk about that another time, about Leon Rose. And I actually think that because of the relationship that he had with Leon Rose, Tom Thibodeau, and everything, got him that extension, got him that three-year, $45 million contract, which we could have had kept. We still have – we had Miles McBride on the team. We could have kept that money. And right now, we wouldn't be fishing around trying to make money up for Josh Hart. That's another story. But that was a waste of time and a waste of a roster space resigning Derrick Rose. He didn't play – uh, this year, he only played 27 games. He didn't start near one game. Average 12.5 minutes. Points, 5.6. Um, I grant he did average 14.9 points in 35, I mean, excuse me, in 2021 in them 35 games. But he was also getting playing opportunity, and he wasn't hurt. Well, he was hurt. That's why he only played 35 games, and that's what cost us the season. Not even the season, like, it was a bad move. I know a lot of y'all is very fond, fond of, um, Jet, excuse me, of Derrick Rose, but this was a move that's supposed to be about the team. We can't be have. I don't want to say like you know just chuck these guys to the side like they didn't do nothing for the team. But what have Derrick Rose really done for this team? He's not a Patrick Ewing, John Stark type player. He wasn't drafted by us. He wasn't a, a big time player player for us. He, there's no real special moments with Derrick Rose. We didn't owe him that much loyalty to give him that much money. 
knowing that his body couldn't handle the, the seasons coming along. Come on. They're not stupid. They knew Derrick Rose could not uh, compete at the level we was hoping. But it was more about, and I'm going to get to that, you know what I'm saying, in a second. It was more about Tom Thibodeau. It was more about Tom Thibodeau and Derrick Rose and the relationship he had with management. And this might be the downfall of the New York Knicks. The management and the players. I know Jalen Brunson is a damn good player. Um, but we we got to build a team. We can't have a place where certain, certain players can come in and do what they want. All right? Because right now, at, at the way you see an offseason move right now, I'm be honest, I don't think any player want to come play for Tom Thibodeau. And that's just my that's just my opinion. And with that point being said, let's just jump over to my man, Obi Toppin. All right, what's up, y'all? I know a lot of people, it's been speculation, especially before the draft, that Obi Toppin would be traded. I was happy the draft passed and nothing happened. That don't mean Obi Toppin is still safe. But one interesting thing happened during the draft or after the draft, the New York Knicks did sign Obi Toppin, brother. I know y'all all know this to a summer league. And, um... It still had me wondering. I know a lot of people out there. I don't, I'm going to be honest. I don't know. I, throughout the season, last season, this season, I've been hearing people talking about, let's trade Obi Toppin. Let's trade Obi Toppin. And I think that would be, I think that would be a, a, a fool's move. I'm, I honestly think that would be a one of the worst moves the Knicks can make. We've been trading away our rookie players before we can even see what they can do. And I know a lot of y'all want to say he's limited. He's only limited because Tom Thibodeau. And speaking of that. This nigga wow, One more time. This nigga wow, Do y'all agree with Obi Toppin? Because I happen to agree with Obi Toppin. I'm not going to say... Tom Thibodeau is a bum ass coach, but Tom Thibodeau is an outdated coach. Tom Thibodeau do not know how to utilize his talent, and I know it wasn't professional of Obi Toppin to go after his coach. I do not agree with that move. No, I do not. Um, yes, he had to be disciplined in in some way for that, but I don't think shipping him out would be the correct thing to do. It will only hurt this team. Um, and the reason I say this and you have to think about the way the, the the Miami series was played. But afterwards, you know what I'm saying? After the Miami series was played, or uh, even during the, the interviews when the when reporters were asked Tom Thibodeau, did you know Jimmy Butler had this in him? And Tom Thibodeau, flat out honest as can be, said no. So what do that tell you about a coach when you cannot see the potential in a player? So... I'm going to be honest, the New York Knicks might just implode. I don't care what move we make. Um, go out and get Paul George. I think that would be the dumbest move that there is possible. I don't know why they keep floating that out there. George have not played in 56 games since 2019. That would be the worst possible scenario for the New York Knicks. I think the New York Knicks got to rock out, man. We blew our draft pick on Josh Hart. And the question is, was that draft pick worth Josh Hart. I know a lot of people say, yeah, it is, it was, but I don't know because it's no guarantee that Josh Hart is coming back to us. I know we hear reports that they're working on some type of uh, agreement or hold up, but in my opinion, all that means is that the New York Knicks is about to overpay Josh Hart. And reason being why, because we're not going, we're not attracting any um, um, a free agents. We're not. Uh, we was we was interested in Nas. He resigned with his team. We was uh, trying to go after another guy. He resigned with his team. And the, and the truth be told is, let's be honest. Players do not want to play for Tom Thibodeau. They don't. Okay, player like J Derrick Rose, yes. You know, saying Jalen Brunson coming. Like I said earlier on the video, these relationships, these relationships is going to be the downfall of our team. It might cause us to implode. Come next season, we might have one half of the bench fighting the next half of the bench. And if we, if we don't, if we as a team do not explore all the talent that we have, there's no way we can advance. I don't care who we go out and get. 
Tom Thibodeau is not a coach for today. He's a mediocre coach. I ain't going to say he's a bad coach, but he's mediocre at best. And I happen to agree with Obi Toppin. Please hit me in the comments. Tell me what y'all think. Do y'all think that will this moment with t um Tom Thibodeau and Obi Toppin pass over? Or are the Knicks still actively trying to move t t um, Toppin because of what happened? I think, I don't know. I don't come on my channel and even act like I know what the management is about to do. But like I said, I do give you my opinion. And I think if the New York Knicks was to move Tom Thibodeau, with, excuse me, well, if they was to move Tom Thibodeau, that would be putting this team in the right direction. I just think any coach right now would be better than Tom Thibodeau. They would come out and give players or, you know, somebody like Monty Williams. Williams. I like that type of coach. You know what I'm saying? Topping in the last three years, his, you know, his, his points have went up. Actually, his points went down this year because last year he averaged nine points. This year he averaged seven point four points, um, and that's because of the the minutes he's getting. And if you think about the end of the, the this playoff loss when he didn't play the entire second half, I'd have been mad too because Julius Randle, as we discovered, was more hurt than we we knew. So why have him out there knowing that he wasn't going to be a contributor, that he wasn't going to be a factor? This is why I agree with him as a bum ass coach. Excuse me. I'm going to go back and say a mediocre coach. He's mediocre. He's mediocre. He didn't get us. I'm, I'm going to be honest. He did not get us to the playoffs. Jalen Brunson's got us there. He got us to the playoffs. Julius Randle got us to the playoffs. Tom Tittle did not get us to the playoffs. Same thing with this team. This team is not going to go nowhere with this coach. The players is going to start um, muting, and they're gonna, it's going to be a mutiny. That's what I see, and you've seen that on each team that Tom Tittle coached. He wasn't fired from teams for nothing. And I think maybe mid-season or at the end of the season that he will be fired from the New York Knicks. Um, maybe it'll be a blessing. Maybe it won't. But I think it'll be best for the team. Y'all tell me what y'all think in the comment section. And with that being said, I want everybody to stay safe, stay healthy. God bless and peace.